we're looking at Euler's method of taking a direction field and an initial condition and figuring out or approximating where that particle will move in the future. Uh, all this does require that y is a function of x and that we can always move to the right and that is super important. So this does not work for all vector fields <clears throat> but only ones that are based uh, the original solution would be a function of x. So we'll start with right here the standard uh, point slope form right here just solved for y2 minus y1 below and then go a little further down here we have solve for y2 now what we're going to do is we're going to use y1 x1 so we'll use an initial point and then we're going to use the slope to estimate where the next point would be on the curve based on a certain distance right here, a certain horizontal distance. We're gonna call the horizontal distance h, and just gonna be, uh, you can subtract any two adjacent x values. And we're gonna take that slope, and right here, it's x2 minus x1, which we can just call h, and so we're gonna replace that with h. The other thing we're gonna do is the slope, instead of using m, the reason we're doing all this is because we are given y prime. All we have to do is take y prime and plug in the current x, y values of the point. That'll give us the slope right there. And then we'll multiply that by h. And so if we uh, add that to y1, we'll get our estimate for the next y value. So that'll give us y2. And we can do this again and again and again. And what I have written here is if you know the previous x, y pair, we'll call it x, n, y, n. And if you know the slope, which is y prime of that, all you have to do is multiply by h. That is how much your y is going to change. And you just have to take your previous y value and change it by that much. So we're going to use this below. Here's the theorem written out. Uh, I just changed, let's see, I think I did y n plus one right here. And so then uh, this is just y n. And then these were just y n and x n right here. So I just use the same thing, just change the index a little bit. No problem. And what we're going to do is this problem right here. So we have an initial value problem and we're given information about y prime. So first thing we're gonna do is take our x, y values and I just wrote them as x naught, y naught right here. And of course one is the x value. H, increment or step size of 0 0.1. That means h is 0.1. So I wrote that in blue right there. And then just rewrote the formula above because we're going to use it again and again. Now, here I have the first iteration. So I have the initial x naught, y naught, 1, negative 2. I had to find my slope first, and I plugged in. Right here is the slope. You just have to plug in the right x, y values. And the first numbers are easy. They're just 1 and negative 2. So you plug that in. 1 cubed is 1. Negative 2 squared is 4. 1 plus 4 is 5. That's our slope. And then I just rewrote that uh, same formula. I just wrote it a little bit nicer with just the letter M instead of Y prime of all that stuff. So I swapped in the, y, the M value we just computed, which was 5, multiplied by H and added negative 2. And that is our next y value, which we'll call y1. So we start with y0, we just got y1, is negative 1.5. And if we look down below, I play the same game, except now, instead of xy being 1, negative 2, xy is 1.1 and negative 1.5. use the formula for y prime with these values. This is quite a bit uglier. I use a calculator and that was boring. I don't want you to see me typing numbers in. So that's what you get when you type those in. 3.581 is the new slope. 
and then I wrote the simplified formula right here, plugged in y1, m, and h, I computed it out, we get negative 1.1419, that's y2. So how long do we need to do this for? We're starting from x is 1 and we're going 0 0.1 each iteration, so we need to do 10 iterations to get all the way to 2. So we have to do quite a bit of this. And as you can see, it's going to get tedious. So I stopped doing it right here. But I think you probably could work this step out. So what I did instead is I used Excel. So let's go over to Excel. And I have an X column, a Y column, and a slope column. And the X column, all I did here, uh, I didn't type all these in. You do need to establish a pattern. So I got two right here, and you just drag it. You probably hard to see in the video recording, but you can, there's a little two down there. Um, and depending on where you stop, that number will tell you there's 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, 1.9, 2. All right, so that gets all my x values. Now, my initial y value is negative 2, so that one is just typed in negative 2. No problem. Slope, oh no, you gotta be careful. If you click in here and then in other cells, it does, sometimes Excel does weird stuff. All right, our first equation or formula in Excel, this slope, I have the Y prime here in E1, the formula, but you can't just type this in and expect it to work. You have to be very specific with Excel. So you have to start with an equal sign and what I did is A5, which is right here, A5, that has the value of 1. And then I cubed it, so I did caret 3 for cubing. Then I did plus B5 cubed, and B5 is in red here. Um, if I did need to multiply this by a number, I could do like 4 times B5 squared. That would be 4Y squared. I didn't have any constants multiplied in, but you may have that. So that's how I got the 5 here. I have the code right here written out, a little bigger font. That might be useful. Okay, so that takes care of the first row. Now the second row is similar, except now instead of explicitly typing the y value in, this y value is from the formula right here. So B5 is the blue, it's the previous y value above. Instead of just typing in uh, 0 0.1 for h, I just went ahead and subtracted a6 minus a5, but you can absolutely use 0.1 right here. Uh, but again, I did uh, a6 minus a5 to get that 0 0.1, and then multiplied by c5, which was the computed slope that we just saw. And I'm hitting escape so it doesn't edit that formula, but this is our new y value. So this would be the y value at 1.1. So there's our y value. Uh, this would be, I'd call this uh, x1, y1. This is x0, y0, x1, y1. This will be x2, eventually y2. All right, we saw the first slope computed right there. The next slope down, same formula, except instead of being in row 5, we're in row 6 now. So it's a, a6 cubed plus b6 squared, and make sure you got your equal sign at the front. Uh, I do have this formula typed out here so you can see it. After this is basically just exercise and copy and paste, but you can save a keystroke. You select both of these. I'm holding down shift to select both. I think you can also click and drag to select them both. You can copy paste, control C, control V, uh, or you can just drag, the cursor turns into a plus sign at the corner, and then I drag down, and it does the same thing as copy-paste. And you'll notice that this uses uh, B6, A7, A6, and C6. That doesn't seem right. Oh, yeah. No, that's right. A7 minus A6, yeah. And eh, maybe I should have used point 0.1. Maybe that would have been smarter. Multiply by C6, which is that C6 slope right there in green. And that gives, you, gives me my new Y value. So this is Y2. 
So that's x2, y2, x3, y3, x4, y4, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I didn't type in all the formulas here because you should be able to tell what uh, the pattern is. You're basically just adding one to every number after the letter. Uh, but you should just use Excel's automated way of doing this. Uh, of course, I can keep going. If I needed to go to three, I can just drag this down. Now, it doesn't give me that nice little helpful. Oh, boy. What in the world happened here? Oh, the pattern got messed up. Okay, so Excel needs to know the pattern. Here we go. I have to go 1.9 and 2. Then I can drag it down. This, none of this is needed. This is just... Uh, for fun, so we can go all the way to three. These are scientific notation, so these numbers are very small, no, very big. Oh, let's just delete all that, we don't need it. All right, this is all we need for that problem, and this saves us a whole lot of time. You can't compute it by hand, but why?